So greetings, everyone. Thank you, Camille, for that. I'm not sure if Rohan is able to greet at this time. If you're able to greet Rohan, can you just unmute your mic and just greet, greet us, please? Greetings, everyone. Greetings. Such a joy to be able to, to share with Coach Raquel and, of course, to have the privilege of sharing with Dr. Connor, Dr. Eddie Connor. Uh, for those who have been following Coach Raquel, um, very early in one of our series, Dr. Connor came on, and we know that Dr. Connor uh, always has something rich in store to offer. So for those who are on, um, make sure you make maximum use of this moment. Uh, Dr. Connor has been kind enough to, to, to join uh, and present in this series. It's an absolute, absolute privilege. And, and, I, and I'm looking forward to the session as well. Dr. Connor, looking forward to hear from you. Uh, may God continue to bless you, my brother. Appreciate you, Dr. Rohan. What a blessing. Yeah. Appreciate you. Bless you. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Rohan for that. We appreciate that. So Dr. Connor, I know we said 815. But why wait? Listen, I'm I'm if you if you if you need more time, I'm here. I'm chilling. I'm enjoying it. No. <laughs> we are ready. We are ready. We are ready. Persons are coming in and we're just we're just glad to have them. So I just want to say welcome. Welcome. You're just in time. But just since Dr. Connor says he will take a little more time, let me just do for the benefit of those who weren't here for the last two weeks, what we did. We spoke about identifying your seasons and I have divided the seasons into four, trying seasons, testing season, turmoil season and thriving seasons. And we said in the first week that the core of all these seasons is what we call the trusting season. So it doesn't matter what season you're going through, one thing is constant is that we must always be trusting God. We define the trying season as the, the growing season, the season when you are in pursuit of what it is that God wants you to do and you're just trying to please God no matter what. That season, we say you experience constant spiritual growth, learning new things, you experience new things. Sometimes it's hard to endure when you are going through that time, but you develop some new skills. We spoke about the testing season and we did a twist to it. We said that the testing season is a season when God permits certain things in our life for us to be able to utilize the things that we have learned in theory, the things that we've learned in church, the things that we've read in books and in the Bible, the open declarations we have made. And during this season, some of the things that we, we go through is that we might be praying to God, but we feel like we're not hearing any answer. Sometimes we become sad and we're frequently crying and we feel like bad things are just constantly happening. And we, we find ourselves worrying more than trusting. So that is a testing season. Then we spoke about the turmoil season and the turmoil season is when we are not 100% sure, we're not 100% sure if we are basically doing what, what God wants us to do. It's almost like, I, I don't understand. I, I was trusting you and all of these things and life seemed to just be bombarding bombarding us in this season and we, and we don't know what to do. That's the, the, that's the turmoil season. So in this season, you experience uncertainty and lack of order. And, 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 and you wonder, you know, you know, God plan seemingly is not clear. And you, you, you're constantly tired and feel overwhelmed and overworked. But, you know, so that's just some of the things that you might experience. And then we have the thriving season. This is the season when we all want to experience and we, we hope that, you know, oh, we can just be thriving all the time when we're happy and we feel like God is just working on our behalf and we're blessed. You know, in Jamaica, we love to say we are blessed and highly favored. 
So at this time, that is the season that we want to experience. But through the two weeks that we have been here, we have established that all of these seasons serve a purpose and you can win and you can thrive through all these seasons because God has a plan. And if you can just identify, Lord, what is the purpose of this season? And what is it that you want me to learn? And what is it that you want me to do? Then it means that you will be winning. That is what is important. So that is what we look at last those last two weeks. For those who weren't here, somebody just came on. Can you just mute your mic, please? So these are not easy times. But it's not a time when you can learn a lot about it, but it is a time when you can learn a lot about yourself and your ability to persevere. Make a decision to endure and push through the difficult situations that you face and will, and you will absolutely have breakthroughs. You will absolutely have wins. Let me read that again. These are not easy times. But it's a time when you can learn a lot about yourself and your ability to persevere. Make a decision to endure and push through the difficult situations that you face and you will absolutely have breakthroughs. You will absolutely experience wins and absolutely be able to navigate through your difficulties. And with this said, I now just want to stop sharing my screen and I now introduce to you Dr. Eddie Connor, who will be our presenter for tonight. And I just want you to make him welcome. Just put in the chat, just say, bless him, Lord, as he will, will be speaking to us about how to navigate through all our seasons. <laughs> Thank you once again for joining us, and it's over to you. Thank you so much. Please. Sorry. Yeah, I'm getting some noise in my ear here. All right. I think I have muted. All right. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, you ought to praise God on your screen. You ought to just thank him for what he's done in your life. Uh, just for the opportunity to be able to be here tonight. Uh, it's Saturday Night Live for a sure enough reason. Somebody is sure enough in for a treat for what God has for you. Uh, listen, aren't we grateful for the one and only Raquel Ambersley? Come on, show her some love. Maybe you got to, you know, show yourself on your screen and clap your hands, whatever you got to do. Come on, show some love to the one and only Raquel. Uh, like, like the prefix of her first name suggests, she is rooted in the solid rock, the rock of ages. And, and the way she introduced me, I, I don't know, I might need to put her on a plane and, and have her uh, come to every virtual event with me uh, because she's shown up gave me a, a shown of raving uh, response and introduction. Uh, That's a I great idea, not... Dr. Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, spoken like a true brother, for sure. <laughs> um, listen, I'm no stranger to, to Jamaica at all. Jamaica land we love. I grew up in Kingston for, for part of my life. Uh, I know my accent is so bad. Uh, yeah, man, no problem. Uh, uh, Raquel is definitely uh, trying to reinvigorate my accent tonight. Uh, I don't know if y'all pray hard enough. I just might leave with some patois uh, on my palate tonight. I, I definitely uh, am missing the, uh, the the jerk chicken, the the kalalu make you say hallelu, uh, the, the 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 Johnny cakes, the 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 mangoes, the aki and saltfish. Listen, I, if I keep going on, I might not be able to finish tonight. But uh, we are, many of us tonight, we are Jamaican. The last four letters in Jamaican spells, I can. The word already tells you, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. But uh, your own uh, ethnicity says, I can, Jamaican, I can do all things. And so, uh, so good to see everybody tonight. Um, if, if you're able to text tag, 
tell somebody to jump on because there is a right now word uh, for you tonight. Listen, to, to everything, there is a time and a season and we can see for sure that we are literally in a sila season. Uh, we're literally in a sila moment. Uh, the the sila, the sela, really is all about stopping and thinking. Uh, now we got to pause for a cause in the midst of COVID nineteen and and everything being shut down. But a lot of times when things are are closed on the outside, now we got to open up our spirit on the inside. When you can't necessarily go outside, now you got to go inside. And that's what I want to share about tonight. Uh, scripture uh, affirms in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, for I know the plans that I have for you. Uh, thus saith the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. And so before I uh, really uh, speak life into your life tonight, I just want to pray uh, that this word hits home to your heart, to your spirit. And uh, that God anoints it to speak to your soul. Kind and gracious Father, we thank you uh, tonight for your love and saving power. We thank you for the opportunity to, to gather even in a virtual space and place. And we know that your word said, greater works than these shall ye do. And we know that you were even thinking technology and virtual too. And so God, just give us creative ability, release ideas that become income, release contacts that become contracts. Anoint my brother and my sister for the task at hand. Uh, release ingenuity and ideas right now. Release healing, restoration, reinvigoration by your spirit. We thank you that we will be faith walkers. That we won't run in fear, but we'll walk by faith. We thank you for uh, the prophetess, this woman of God that you have placed to gather us for such a time as this. Anoint her uh, far beyond even her own uh, ideas and her own imagination. Make her uh, place uh, in a prism, not just locally, but also globally, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for release. We thank you for a refreshing word. We thank you for rejuvenation, regeneration by your spirit in Jesus' name. If you believe it, you just ought to type amen. Come on, type amen. Amen means so let it be. Come on, you ought to just type that. Listen, I want to tag uh, tonight's text with this title. The, the Bible said, Greater works than these shall ye do. He also said, greater is he that is within you uh, than he that is in the world. Um, and that is listed in 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, ye have God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is within you than he that's in the world. I just want to tag this text tonight with this title, win from within. Somebody just type that tonight. Win from within, come on, you can, yes, win, W, all I do is win, 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 no matter what, that's right, we're going to win, uh, tonight you're going to spread your wings and win, as I said before, greater is he that's within, and he that's in the world, uh, you're going to win from within, uh, listen, tonight, we can uh, look at our world. You can look on TVJ if you're in Jamaica. Uh, you can look on Watch On Profile. You can watch CNN uh, for everybody who gets that. Um, and we understand with all of what is going on in our world, uh, with all this, what is going on in our homes and our communities and our environments, uh, we, we realize challenges make champions. And really, if you're going to win, it's not about the clothes that you wear. It's not about the shoes that are on your feet. Uh, it's about the spirit. It's about the soul. It's about the mindset. Let this mind be in you, uh, which was also in Christ Jesus. You not being conformed to this world, but being transformed by the renewing of your mind. If you're going to win, it's going to be from within. It's going to be a determination that says against all odds, against financial instability, against a divorce, against heartbreak and heartache, against being furloughed, uh, against uh, the fact that your money is funny, your change is strange, your credit or debit still seemingly can't get it. Amidst all of that, I still will have the victory. I will overcome. That's got to have a determination. That's got to be your spirit. That's got to be the resilience in your, in your mindset tonight. Here it is, because we're living through a chapter in history 
that we thought we'd only read in school books. What do I mean by that? We're in 2021 and we've already experienced the Spanish flu epidemic of 1918. We've already experienced the uh, Great Depression. Uh, if you lived in the United States of 1929, we've already experienced the social unrest of 1968. And here it is, we've lived through this since March of last year. So many people have died, generals have gone on, giants have gone on, they've dropped off and left mantles. Giants have died, seemingly only to be replaced by midgets. It's, it seems as if we're, we're in a, a, a cataclysmic type of extirpation where loved ones have, have gone on and people are suffering silently and even aloud. But here it is, the miracle in all of it is you're still here. You're still able to not just breathe life, not just to exist, but to live with purpose, live on purpose and live for a purpose because you have a dynamic and a destined purpose. I, I, I can't help but to think about the thought leader by the name of Oliver Wendell Holmes, who said, uh, he's a noted author and he's a physician uh, who declared a mind stretched by new ideas never returns to its original dimension. Once my mind has been stretched, once God begins to take a hold of my mind, once I acquiesce my mind to the will of God, then I think bigger than ever before. I think bigger than my background. I think bigger than my breakthrough, breakdown. I think bigger to break through and break out of the, the box of what society tries to place me in. Why? Because our mind is going to be the place that I've got to get renewed. Listen, you, you are not transformed by the renewing of your marital vows. I know, I know you say, well, I love my bae, my boo, my honey. I, I know that. You're not transformed by the renewing of your car note or your car lease. You're not transformed by the renewing of your apartment or your condo lease. You are transformed by the renewing of your mind. And I got to get my mind together. If I can't get my mind together, my life will never shape up to the place of what it should be. Got to have a mind renewal. Uh, why is that? Because the human brain produces as many as 12,000 to 50,000 thoughts a day. Listen to this, if you ever ask a man, uh, what are you thinking? And he says nothing, he's lying. <laughs> because we got at least 12,000 to 50,000 thoughts a day, depending on the depth of our human thought. And, and the fact of the matter is, even with so many of the, the daily thoughts and the random thoughts, the question that I ask you tonight is what are you thinking about? I wanna ask you that question tonight. Are you, are you just thinking about the plate that you're gonna make so that you can eat food tonight? Or, or are you thinking the soul food that God is getting ready to depart and deposit in your spirit? Uh, what is really on your mind tonight? Are you thinking doubt or are you thinking faith? Are you thinking that it's never going to work out? Or are you thinking that I'm just, just a little bit closer to my next level? Are you thinking that it's not going to work out? Or are you thinking that I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me? See, the fact of the matter is so many of us, we want a million dollars, but God wants to give you a million dollar idea, right? I, if I'm faithful over the little, He's going to make me ruler over much. And the idea cannot just be just a million dollars, but multi-million dollars, multi-books, multi-dimensions, multi-businesses that God is releasing to your spirit tonight. Why is that? Because for every theology, there is a psychology. And that is God operates within the parameters of our mind. He operates within the par parameters of our spirit. But but we are not a robot, he's given us free will, so he doesn't override our mind. God respects our mind, he respects our faults, he respects what he placed inside of us as human vessels, and he understands that for you and I to be transformed, it has to be by the renewing of my mind. I'm not renewed in my mind by what so-and-so says, I'm not renewed in my mind by junk, but by me recognizing that there's a treasure in an earthen vessel. I'm not renewed in my mind by what's going on with the news. I'm renewed in my mind by opening his good news to let me know 
whose report will you believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. I've got to be renewed to say, nay, in all these things, I'm more than a conqueror. And, and one thing that we must understand is that we are spirit and we are mind. You are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body. But what God does is he operates in us uh, since we are made in his image as a triune being. And, and, and the question becomes, as I said, are you thinking fear or faith? Are you thinking as a winner or a whiner? Are you thinking as a warrior or a warrior? Are you thinking as a chicken or an eagle? Are you thinking as a chump or a champion? Are you thinking from this aspect and the perspective of I'm chained to my past? Or are you thinking that I will be changed for my future? I, I, I wanna let somebody know that you're not transformed by the renewing of your bank account. You're transformed by the renewing of your mentality because your mentality determines your reality. Are, are y'all with me tonight? Are y'all with me? Uh, you, your mentality determines your reality. And so what I've got to do is if I serve a big God, why am I thinking so small? Come on now. If you serve a big God and you testify and you shout and you praise and you worship like you do, then why are small thoughts and ideas confining you? Listen, you got to think bigger than your budget. You got to think bigger than your bank account. You got to think bigger than your background. You got to think bigger than your boulevard. You got to think bigger than your environment. I got to think beyond what I see because God wants to transform my reality. I, you got to get rid of that victim's mentality. Just because it was this way doesn't mean it's going to remain this way. You got to transform your mindset to where circumstances don't control you but you now control your circumstances. Why? Because chains are no longer metal. Here it is, now they are mental. There, there are so many chains that keep us walking in a place of being confused and confounded rather than being transformed. So many of us are walking in the power uh, of, of, of doubt versus in the power of faith. I gotta walk in the power of what God has placed inside of me. And so many people go through their day physically awake, but they're mentally asleep. Somebody just, just type, stay woke. I, 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 gotta, I, gotta, I gotta stay woke, I gotta be awakened. I can't lose consciousness of what God has placed on the inside of me. I can't be physically awake, but spiritually, mentally, socially, and emotionally sleep. Why? Because the tragedy is to be gifted, but to never open your package. The tragedy is to be a red box and a gold bowl, but to only see your life as just a piece of junk. The tragedy is to breathe life, but to never live it. And, and see, some of us are only physically alive, but spiritually dead. And you gotta get to a place to where you shake yourself. I, I'm shaking myself out of depression. Somebody ought to shake themselves tonight. You ought to shake not shake it like a salt or pepper shake it, not shake, shake it like a Polaroid picture, but, but shake yourself out of what the enemy put on you. I'm shaking that divorce off of me. I'm shaking that breakdown off of me. I'm shaking that abuse off of me. I'm brushing my shoulders off and telling the devil, you better pick it back up. I'm, I'm shaking off doubt and decay and dismay and disbelief. Say in the name of Jesus, I, I'm breaking out of this because there's a breakthrough that's waiting for me. Why is that? Because an African proverb suggests that the two most important dates in your life are get this number one, the day that you were born. I know y'all get happy about that. You celebrate your birthday uh, like it was a national holiday, it's, but it's not just the day that you were born, it's the day you realize why you were born. What is your why for living? I know what you want. I know when you wanna get it. I know where you wanna receive it. Uh, but, but the question is why? Why do you want the fancy car? Why do you want the fancy clothes? Why do you want your name and lights if your mindset is still in the dark? See, because your character, your gift can take you where your character can't keep you. What is it to have a great gift if I don't have the confines of character? Your gift will put you in the lights, but oftentimes character will put you in the basement. I gotta get a hold of what it is that God wants me to, to leverage 
so that I live with purpose, on purpose and for purpose, because I have a dynamic purpose. You got to understand, it's not just what you go through. It's how you grow through what you go through. So it's, it's about me understanding that oftentimes the greater the, the pain, the greater the promise, the greater the battle, the greater the blessing. And if the enemy is trying to destroy you, if the enemy is sending depression your way, if the enemy has sent hurt, if the enemy has sent laws, if the enemy has sent instability your way, you got to understand that I, I got to get excited right about now because if I'm getting attacked, that must mean that there's a big blessing that's on the other side of this pain. I got news for somebody tonight. Sometimes the anointing on your life att attracts attacks. Sometimes the anointing on your life attracts attacks. Why? Because if, if, you're, if you're gifted, you will be afflicted, right? It, the gifting sometimes elicits the afflicting. The trying of your faith worketh patience, patience, experience, experience, hope. And Raquel mentioned tonight that in many times we're going through so many seasons, the seasons that are trying, the seasons of testing, the seasons of turmoil, the seasons even of thriving. You can't thrive until you've been tested. You can't thrive until you've been tried. You can't thrive until you've gone through a place of turmoil. And you got to understand that if you're in a place in your life of being tested, uh, some, sometimes we're in a place of being tested. You got to understand, just like you were in school, the teacher is always quietest during the test. Some of you saying, well, I can't hear God speak to me. I, I'm not hearing any type of answer from God. Sometimes you got to still get to a place to where, God, I trust you even when I can't trace you. I can't trace you in my finances. I can't trace you in my house with my spouse. I can't trace you because I'm still single. I can't trace you because I'm in a marriage that doesn't seem to be working out right now. I can't trace you, but God, I trust you. Can you still have that mentality tonight? To say, God, even though it's been, even though there's a place of testing, I'm still in a place of trusting. I'm going to trust you in the trying time. I'm going to trust you in the testing. I'm going to trust you in the turmoil because we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. And the reason you can thrive tonight, here it is, because you survive. I want to talk to some survivors tonight. I want to talk to those who are going to move from survive to thrive tonight. You survived your worst season. I want to talk to somebody tonight. You survived your worst season. You survived storms and seasons that other people threw in the towel about. They gave up. While you were crying, you understood. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. While you were crying, you understood. That, that uh, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. I'm, I'm excited for your harvest tonight. For as many tears you cried, it's going to be as big as your harvest is. For all the times that people walked out on you and didn't just stab you in the back, but stabbed you in the face. Listen, God's getting ready to give you double for your trouble. You're getting ready to get a double portion of strength, of sagacity. Somebody just typed tonight. Win from within. Listen, even when you were without, God gave you something from within. I got power that I haven't used yet. I got a worship on my, in my spirit. I got a praise that is not determined by my situation. My situation doesn't determine my praise. My praise dictates to my situation. I want to talk to somebody tonight. I want to talk to a few people tonight that you got to win from within. Listen, the richest place on the planet is not Bill Gates's house. It's not Oprah Winfrey's house. It's not uh, the, the prime minister of Jamaica. It's not LeBron James's house. I don't know, Alethea, is it your house? Is it Andrea's house? Is it Camille uh, Brown and Camille J. Bailey? I don't know, Kamoy, is it your house? Uh, Demain, Damien, I, I don't know if I'm saying the right charger to my my lips, not my heart. Darcy, is it your house? Donnell, Donzi, Joy, Jody, uh, Kalisha, I don't know if it's your house. Carrie, 
uh, Lorna, Maxine, Miss Pinnock. I don't know if it's your house. Maybe it is. I'm praying that it'd be my house. Uh, Ona Lee, uh, Ramon, Rohan, uh, Roxanne, Sandra, uh, Sa Sharon, Tanisha, Tanrika, Tequila. Is it yours? T, T Tona, Vanessa, Raquel. It just might be yours. The richest place on this planet is not anybody's house. It's not anybody's estate. According to Dr. Miles Monroe, the richest place on the planet is your local cemetery. Why is that? Because people have died with books that they've never written. They've died with cures to diseases. They've died with ideas that never became the income, with contacts that never uh, really escalated the contracts. They died with mellifluous, melodious, euphonious uh, music that they never recorded. They died with cures to diseases that, that the world never thought and ever saw come to fruition. They died with businesses that they, that they never opened. And I don't know who I'm talking to tonight, but you gotta make sure that you leave everything on this planet that God gave you. Listen, you'll never be fulfilled until you are walking in the fulfillment of his will. Money's not gonna fulfill you. Having a spouse in your house is not going to fulfill you. It's you partnering with the purpose that God gave you. Listen, I don't know who, who's a mother on the line tonight, but I believe any mother will tell you that it's always uncomfortable right before your blessing. Aren't we living in uncomfortable times? Aren't we living in times where you got to forsake the familiar? Listen, now we got to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. We got to get uncomfortable with being comfortable. Hear me, the most dangerous place in life is not when you're walking on water, it's when you're staying in the boat. Listen, so many of us are afraid to get out of the boat. Uh, uh, Raquel talked about the ship and, and I'm wondering what is, the, what is the substratum? What is the context? What is the structure of your relationship? with God, because when I understand my relationship with God, it now moves me to where life is not always comfortable. Life is not always uh, lived on cloud nine. Life sometimes is rocky. Life sometimes has turmoil, right? Life sometimes has testing and trying times. But I gotta understand that God is always with me. I can't look at the storm. I gotta stop telling God, how big my storm is. And I got to start telling my storm how big God is. How big is, what's, what's your storm tonight? Somebody's storm might be cancer. Somebody's storm tonight might be uh, feeling abandoned. Somebody's storm tonight might be loneliness. But just like any mother will tell you that in order to give birth to your baby, this is what you got to do. You got to push. You got to push through the storm. You got to push through the rain. You gotta push through the trials and the pain. Why? Because push means pray until something happens. Push tonight also means praise until something happens. I gotta pray and I gotta praise. I gotta push through the heartache. I gotta push through the headaches. I gotta push through the haters and the naysayers. I gotta push through the doubt that just might be in my mind and give it an eviction notice and say, in the name of Jesus, the blood is covering me. In the name of Jesus, the Holy Ghost is, is, is covering me from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit will bring everything back to my remembrance. And I want to talk to somebody. You, you're literally in a place of, of travailing. You're literally in a place of where you're having spiritual contractions. You're literally in a place of, of where you know that you're pregnant with purpose, promise, possibility, and potential to where you say, life has got to be more than just this. There's more to my life. I I'm pregnant with purpose. I I've got something that's on the inside of me. I got a book that I got to give birth to. I got a business that I've got on the inside of me. I go to bed at night and my tears hit the pillow and I feel unfulfilled, I feel uncomfortable, and I'm in a job to where it seems as if I'm just over broke, but your job is what you're paid for, but your calling and your purpose is what you're made for. I wanna talk to somebody tonight. This is your time to give birth to what it is that you've been carrying. It will not be stillborn. 
You will not abort the gift that's on the inside of you. You will not miscarry the mission that God has given you. But tonight is your night to deliver. Tonight is your night to deliver your destiny. Tonight is the night. Listen, tonight is the, is the, the first night of your forever future. Tonight is the first night of you birthing your dreams. Here it is, you gotta stop thinking about what you got to lose. And you gotta start focusing on what there is to gain. Stop sharing your dreams with dream killers. Stop surrounding yourself with drama and, and negativity and people who don't wanna see you go or grow to the next level. Stop telling people with limited thinking your unlimited dreams. You, you gotta get to a place to say, God, if it's just you and me, it's a majority. If it's just you and me, then I got to move to the next level. Listen, I'm almost out of time, but I'm not out of truth. Uh, but, but here it is tonight. You got to begin thinking bigger than where you've been. You got to stop thinking failure. And you got to start thinking success. Listen, you, you, you might have a few failures getting to the next step for success. But guess what? You got to fail forward. <laughs> I'm moving in the direction. If this don't work out, I know God's going to put it in another direction, another place for it to work out. If they say no, I know God's saying new opportunity. And the question tonight that I want to leave you with is, are you a chicken or are you an eagle? Because I'm not just, I'm not calling you a chicken tonight. I had that for dinner last night. I'm just asking you a question. It, I wish it was jerk, jerk chicken, but it wasn't that. It was just baked chicken. You, you got to understand that you are an eagle and you're right on the edges of greatness. You're right on the precipice of success. And here it is. I'm the person tonight who's going to push you over the cliff. Listen, whenever there's an eagle that is born, and, and if it's taken too long to crack out of the shell, the mother will peck at the, the shell of it and break the child out. And before the child, the, the baby eagle is trying to flap its wings and get ready to soar. If it's timid, what will the mother do? The mother will push that eagle over the cliff. And not only will they just push them over the cliff to die, uh, but they will tell them to flap their wings. And the eagle begins to flap its wings because it doesn't know what else to do. But if the eagle is getting ready to, to hit the cliff, the mother's right there to swoop it up. I want to let somebody know God is pushing you tonight into your destiny. God's pushing you tonight and you don't have any other choice but to spread your wings. Listen, you can't even talk about when. The only way, listen, listen, the, the, the prefix for the word wings spells win. I wanna talk to somebody tonight. Listen, you will win if you spread your wings. You will win if you get out of the chicken coop and get around some eagles. You don't see eagles in a chicken coop. Eagles hang around eagles. Eagles put their nest in the mountains. Eagles move to another level. Eagles understand that, that uh, even in COVID-19, here's, here's the remedy to COVID-19 is Isaiah 43 and 19, where God said, behold, I will do a new thing in you. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I'll make a uh, a way even in the wilderness. I'll put rivers even in the desert. Somebody said, well, I don't even know if I believe that. Then go to Luke 4 in 19. And Jesus said, uh, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, uh, set at liberty them that are bruised, uh, uh, give sight to the blind, uh, to claim the acceptable year of the Lord. Listen, I don't know uh, about you, but even in the midst of devastation and affliction, it still is an acceptable year in the spirit. Luke 4 and 19, Isaiah 43 and 19, in the midst of COVID-19, can you let go of the old and step out into the new? And so many times, isn't it interesting, we're in 2021, still dealing with something from two years prior, and God is saying tonight, this is your night to let it go. This is your night not to bring into 2021 what you should have left in 2019, not to bring into 2021 what you should have got rid of in 2020. So many of us are dealing with COVID-19 situations. We're still battling with things that happened one or two years 
and decades ago. But God is speaking to your spirit tonight to say that you got to be not a chicken, but you got to be an eagle. You got to spread your wings. You got to get out of the chicken coop. You got to fly at a high altitude. The difference between chickens and eagles, they're both birds. Chickens flat, but they can never soar. You got to get away from folks who all they do is cluck, who all they do is gossip, who all they do is have the form of godliness, but deny the power thereof, who look like they can fly, but they never make any moves. Aren't you tired of being around people who say what I'm about to do? I'm going to do this, but they never make any moves. You got to get around some eagles. You got to have a vision like an eagle. You got to not just have sight, but you got to have vision. The last thing I love about an eagle is that an eagle, what they do is when every other bird sees a storm, what does the eagle do? The eagle doesn't run from the storm. The eagle doesn't fly or soar away from the storm, but the eagle soars into the storm. And this is what they do. They use the storm to go higher. I want to talk to somebody now. You ain't shouting loud enough. You ain't typing amen in caps enough. You're you not screaming in your screen enough. Somebody just missed your shout tonight. You've got to literally go into this storm, not fly away from it, not go above it, not go under it, not go around it. But God is giving you power like an eagle to go through it to mount up with wings as an eagle. You gonna run and not be weary. You gonna walk and not faint. You gotta use the storm to go higher. You gotta use the storm to win tonight because tonight if you're gonna win, tonight if you're gonna win, the W in win ought to stand for worship. Somebody ought to type that tonight. If you're gonna win tonight, can I just give you an acronym? The W in win or to stand for worship. Anybody can praise God, but the Bible said that the true worshipers shall should worship him, will worship him in spirit and in truth. Here it is, whenever I worship God, now it invites God in and it moves ego and pride out. Whenever I worship, it's, it's literally an acquiescing of oneself to say, God, not my will, but your will be done. When I worship, here it is, your worship is your warfare. When, I, when I'm worshiping, God is moving the toxicity and the junk out of my life. When I, when I worship, it's like literally me putting my clothes in the washing machine and, and God is stirring me up. He's doing something new. He's washing me in the blood of the lamb to where I don't look like what I've been through. When I worship God, it says, God, even when I can't trust you, trace you, I'm going to still trust you. When I can't trace you, when I can't see my way, I know I got fresh revelation to overcome my situation. Can I give you another one? You got, you, the W in win stands for worship. The I in win stands for, here it is, intercession. I got to begin to intercede. I got to begin to tap into my prayer language. I got to begin to understand that, 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 that there's groanings that, that, that I don't even understand that, that's being revealed to me on the inside. I, I got to have an utterance in my spirit. I got to intercede for my son. I got to intercede for my daughter. I got to intercede so that God can make intercession. Jesus goes to the right hand of the Father making intercession for me. Can I also tell you what the eye in, in, in worship is? It's also inspiration. It's also impact. It's also being able to be innovative with ideas and increase your income. Here it is. If you don't evolve, you won't be involved. When I worship, when I intercede, God now gives me a fresh download of ideas to where I don't have to compete, I can collaborate. Where I don't have to compete with you, God gave me a lane and I don't have to get in yours and crash. The end, can I give you the end tonight? We are talking about how to win from within. Number one, if I'm gonna win, the W and win is about worship. The I is intercession, it's inspiration, it's impact, it's ideas, it's innovation, it's income, it's increase, but it's also intentionality. I gotta be intentional about my relationships this year. But the end now means 
now meet a need. Come on, the end is now. Now what? Now meet a need. Now faith. I feel like preaching tonight, it ain't even Sunday. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. What need can you meet? Maybe you can meet a need with your book as Raquel did. Maybe you can meet a need with a business. Maybe you can meet, meet a need with your ministry. Maybe you can meet a need by giving back to help other people move forward. Maybe you can meet a need by developing a business plan. Maybe you can meet a need by being a mentor, right? The end means now meet a need, but it also means no means new opportunity. It means also no one gets to write your story, but you and God. Matter of fact, some of us need to stop need to take the pen out of our hand and put it in God's hand because he is the author and the finisher of our faith. And I gotta be able to move my life to the next level so that I understand where it is that I am and where I'm going. Somebody just type win from within tonight. Listen, I'm getting ready to leave you, but God gave you a manual for your mind and the manuals from Emmanuel. Emmanuel, God with us. He said, I'll keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on me. And that is why it is, dear brothers and sisters, it is with quake and trepidation that I sit before you tonight. I'm woefully unqualified. Shouldn't even seemingly have this humbled opportunity. I'm grateful uh, for Prophet as Raquel extending it to me because, um, yes, I got a, I'm a college professor with a PhD, but all of that, in many cases, is my New Testament, my Old Testament is that I enrolled in the School of Hard Knocks. Old Testament is that I really graduated from the University of Adversity. And I'm a living witness tonight that the least likely can do the most mighty. I'm a living witness tonight that uh, you can do the most uh, because God has chosen you for such a time as this. I'm a living witness that your test is a testimony. Your misery is ministry. Your mess is a message. Your stumbling block is a stepping stone. And what God will do is he'll use your setback as a setup for your greatest comeback. If we we're watching the movie The Color Purple tonight. I'd put on your screen and say, take you to the scene where, it's, where Sophia's talking. She said, all my life, I had to fight. I wonder, am I talking to some people tonight who had to fight through the storm, fight through the rain, fight through some sickness and some pain, fighting through what you had to go through? Because at the age of 15, I was diagnosed with not one, not two, not three, but four, stage four cancer. I was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. I was diagnosed with seemingly my, uh, what would be my turmoil, so to speak, of what I would never overcome, much less become. But if it was not for the grace of God, I wouldn't be able to find the can in cancer. If it wasn't for a praying mama who told me, you got to go to Psalm 118 and 17, which says, you shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Isaiah 53 and 5 said, he was wounded for your transgressions, bruised for your iniquities. Chastisement of his peace was upon you. By his stripes you were healed. When my biological father wasn't there, I'm so glad my heavenly father was there. When father forsake you, then the Lord will raise you up. And I had to say, nay, in all these things, I'm more than a conqueror because healing is the children's bread. At the age of 17, my guidance counselor looked at me and she looked at my grades and she understood that in school, my favorite two classes in school were gym and lunch. Love to chase the girls in school and then sit down and eat with them at lunch. She said, Eddie, you never, you're not going to college. Matter of fact, don't even think about community college. Pick up a trade. Same lady who told me I'd never go to college had to show up to my graduation from college to where I earned a PhD, but for her, it stood for a player hated degree. See, people will doubt you, but you can't let that stop you. You got to understand tonight, depression, you're more than that. Doubt and negativity, you're more than that. Somebody ought to just type, I'm more than that, right? I'm more than a conqueror. Your test is a testimony. This is your hour of power tonight. This is your minute to win it. This is your moment to own it. This is your time to shine. This is your season of reason. This is your day to convey. This is your week to win. This is your month to mark, march. This is your year to cheer and still celebrate the greatness of what God has placed in you. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out because my mind is made up. I'm on my way up. I don't know about you, 
to all my Jamaican brothers and sisters, to my African-American brothers and sisters, the last four letters in African, the last four letters in American, the last four letters in Jamaican spells I can. You can overcome. You can become. Don't lose your mind over the job you lost because you're going to need your mind for the one you're going to create. You got to win from within tonight. Don't lose your mind over the car you lost because you're going to need your, your mind for the new one that's come. Don't lose your mind over the woman who didn't want you because you're going to need your mind for the one who adores you. Don't lose your mind over the wrong man because you're going to need your mind for the right one that's coming. Don't lose your mind over what the devil seemingly placed on you because you're going to need your mind for the anointing that breaks the yoke. Understand your value tonight. Understand your greatness. Know your worth. Walk in your power. Walk as a faith walker. And understand, I might go through the trying times. I might go through the testing. I might go through the turmoil but weeping may endure for a night because I'm not only equipped to survive, but I'm equipped to thrive. Somebody spread your wings tonight because if you spread your wings, you'll win. If you spread your wings tonight, you will win from within. Somebody just type win. Come on, I just need you to type win tonight. I've had enough losses that set me up for a win. I'm getting ready to win big. This next season is going to be all winning season. This is my winning season. I just stepped into the greatest season of my life. And here it is. I'm going to win from within. God bless you. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Amazing. Go ahead, Rohan. Absolutely outstanding. Dr. Eddie, absolutely outstanding. We are so grateful for, for Dr. Eddie and the, the, the wisdom and passion with which he presents. You know, team, I want you to understand that this is big. You have benefited from rich content, absolutely powerful. I was totally, totally just, just, just overwhelmed by the power of what I was receiving. Win from within, win from within. And you've probably never heard it this way. We, we, we need to renew our mind, but the renewal does not come from anything else, not our bank account, not, not our apartment, not our car. It, it, it comes through the Lord himself that if we will renew our mind, then we'll be able to prove what is the good and perfect and acceptable will of the Lord. As I listen to Dr. Connor, you know, I, I am really just totally motivated. And each of us should be motivated as well that we are called upon to leave everything on the planet. Let us not go, go leave this earth with, with all the dreams and all the aspirations. Let us birth all that is in us, the, 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 the gifts and the abilities and the capabilities. Let's do it. We can win from within but he says that if we're going to win from within there's a mindset shift that we need were you listening tonight we need a mindset shift your reality will be impacted by your mentality somebody needs to put in in their mind your reality will determine your reality and and if you're gifted you're going to be afflicted but god will give you double for your trouble. Somebody shout double for my trouble. T tonight, we have been so enriched. And Dr. Connor, we really, we appreciate who you are. We appreciate what you do. We appreciate the contribution you have made to our lives, you know, tonight. I feel, I feel that you have pushed and, and we just need to spread our wings so that we can win. Somebody put win from within because indeed we have a rich opportunity. I've listened tonight and I want to say to somebody, I, I know when, 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 when Coach Raquel reached out to me when she made the link with Dr. Eddie and told me about Dr. Eddie and, and, and clearly you know, made a rich connection with Dr. Eddie to have brought Dr. Eddie to come and share in this series. You know her heart, you know her heart. And as I listened to Dr. Eddie, it is, and I'm saying this to everyone on the call, 
you know, he said, this is your time to deliver. This is your time to give birth to your purpose. I want to tell somebody that I feel that Coach Raquel can be a midwife in the process. In wow. the same way wow. that she has brought faith to face 2021 to us. And the same way she has written that, 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 that devotional that has been so rich for me. And I, I, I'm her brother. When I read it, I said, this is something we need to get into the hand of everybody. You need to reach out to Coach Raquel. Send her an email at raquelambursley at gmail.com. Join the Facebook, uh, the Facebook uh, group, Faith to Face 2021. You need to be sending that email tonight. Order that book if you don't have it. I know many of you do, but order the book. And also talk to her. She can help you with the process. She can, the same way she has brought Dr. Eddie, um, you know, she can bring others to help you. She can make links for persons who can mentor you and coach you. And she herself is, is somebody living what Dr. Connor is talking about, living the capacity to, to step out and to do something great. Somebody needs to make a link with her tonight. Send her a mail, reach out, make a link. She can help you to give birth tonight. She can be your destiny helper. She can support you to fly. You need to make the link tonight. Dr. Connor, we are so, so richly blessed by you. I wonder, Coach Raquel, does this, this, you know, is, is, is there an opportunity to ask a question or two of Dr. Connor? Sure. Um, Dr. <laughs> Connor, if you have a few moments, is there anybody, um, Dr. Connor um, is a busy man, but we're giving the opportunity, a question or two, uh, just to ask, um, even as you send the email to, 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 to Coach Raquel, she has, um, you know, again, made some contact with persons who can be significant resource Please, if you're going through a time, you need somebody to help you, need somebody to support you, reach out. She has typed her email address, reach out. I'm going to take maybe a, just a few questions, two or three questions for Dr. Eddie. Any quick questions about uh, anything that you've heard that you want greater clarity on? Type it in the chat or on mute and ask. Or raise your any hand. Brother wearing my, any brother wearing my color, I'd be glad to... Uh... Uh, answers more questions. So there you go. There you <laughs> we, go, my brother. Yeah. <laughs> we we share the same wardrobe. I see. Absolutely. <laughs> Somebody's asking at Dr. Connor, will there be a part two? Well, you need to talk to Coach Raquel about that vaccine. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot if more that came from. <laughs> if she thinks it's not robbery to invite me back, then I'll I'll be back. Sure. <laughs> Anytime. Any other question for Dr. Connor? Anybody? All right, we see that uh, many persons, Coach Raquel, asking for a part two. Um, that's something you you will have to arrange. I, I tell you, you need to write to, to Dr. To, to to Coach Raquel. She will make some links. She will be able to organize some some sessions. So please reach out. I'm telling you, she she's onto something. God is leading her, and she's onto something. And you need to make use of what she's onto, um, you need to make use. Any, anybody with a question though, be, beyond asking for a part two? <laughs> All right, or, or, or let's, let's have a little interaction. What are you taking away from this session then? Um, what are you taking away? What are your key takeaways from this session that you plan to apply to your life as you face 2021? Anybody wants to share just their takeaways from, from this rich session this evening? Hey, Ron. Hey, Coach Raquel. Hi, Camille. Hey, Dr. Eddie again, everyone. I have a question, um, Dr. Eddie. What kind of, because you sound like somebody who has won and is winning. What kind of support system was in place for you to win? Um, and what are the things that we would need in terms of support for us to win? What has been your support mechanism and structures? And what are some of the things that generally you could say to us that we need in order to? Because we can't do this alone. It sounds good, but we cannot do it alone. We're aware of that. So what, how, what would you say to that? Well, yes. I mean, uh, sometimes one is a majority. And you just having one good person in your life is better than a, a whole bunch of bad ones. 
and uh, people who can encourage you for me dealing with the, the trying time, the most tempestuous time and turmoil of my life was uh, going through cancer. And if I could beat that, the mindset was I could beat anything. And so I had a mother who encouraged me. I had people who would step into my life uh, who were mentors. I think life teaches you in two ways, mistakes and mentors. And what I've tried to do in my life is learn from the mistakes of a mentor versus making my own. And so uh, a person who would have friends but show themselves friendly. I think uh, in this day and age of where we are with the opportunity to network, now uh, we're able to get, we're able to attach on to virtual mentors. Uh, me listening to healing tapes, me um, listening to individuals who were preachers, who were leaders, who were thought individuals like a, a Dr. Miles Rowe or T.D. Jakes. Uh, many of those individuals, uh, um, Kenneth Hagen, who became those types of virtual mentors, so to speak, that even though I wasn't able to touch them, even though I wasn't able to connect with them, even though I wasn't able to talk with them, they were able to breathe life into my spirit. And so uh, I, I think really as you just uh, seek out the individuals who you think would be a, a benefit to you, uh, I think that's great. And, and then when I was able to actually get into the rooms of individuals like a T.D. Jakes or Steve Harvey, sometimes you're not in those rooms to just talk, you're in there to listen. And so uh, just having a receptive ear and, and uh, letting God, do, you know, if that is one of those things, I think that sh you should add that to your prayer life. God put me in place of individuals who won't hate on my gift, who won't come to compete, who won't be envious of me, but who will really unabashedly and unashamedly and, uh, and authentically uh, share rich wisdom that's gonna enlighten my life and my spirit. And I think he will lead them. He'll lead you to them and he'll lead them to you. Thank you very much. Absolutely. And Camille, thank you so much for that question. And, you know, Dr. Eddie, just reminding us of the need to have people to support us. Um, the Faith to Face 2021 Facebook group is, is one of those support mechanisms to support you, to give you nuggets of wisdom and nuggets to, to guide you and to, to help you. Uh, indeed, uh, Camille is onto something in, in terms of the need to make sure we, we have people around us to support us. And, 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 and this is an opportunity even now to build a community around you that can support you. Please make use of it. And we see Kerry posting, posting in the chat that she's, she's taking away the, the, the acronym PUSH, you know, pray until something happens and praise until something happens. And she's also saying she's going to spread her wings in order to soar through the storm. She's also, you know, this idea of partnering with God and partnering with others to it all. And she's taking 43, Isaiah 43, 19, uh, about God doing a new thing and it shall spring forth and, 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 and we shall know it. And he will make ways in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. She's taking that to face COVID-19. Excellent, excellent. Any other person to share their takeaways? Uh, I'll take a few more takeaways and then I'll uh, ask you, Coach Raquel, to just bring it to a close uh, for us, please. Um, any other takeaways? All right, let me just say thanks, uh, Dr. Eddie. It's always such a pleasure to, 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 be, to be with you, my brother. Thank you for sharing your gift and your giftedness. And thank you for sharing all that God has been doing in your life and in such a rich, powerful, and passionate way. Um, we are certainly... Uh, very appreciative of the nuggets you have shared and, and we have benefited richly from, from, from the rich content of truth that you have shared. And we, our, our prayers is that God will continue to bless you and to use you. We're going to remain in touch with you because we believe that there, there's, there's, there's value in what you're offering and we want to, 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 to ask persons to really reach out. Coach Raquel has been sharing on her page um, certain links and contacts and ways to get to Dr. Eddie, you know, that's one of the things I like about Coach Raquel. She, when I, when I look, she shares about the Relationship Academy. Dr. Dr. Eddie, she's <laughs> promoting you a lot. So, so again, we support, we support those who we believe have rich content. So please uh, search um, for Dr. Dr. Eddie and follow um, Coach Raquel on her, on her 
uh, our Facebook page, RA Impact Lives, Raquel uh, um, Ambersley, and you will also be, be able to access content from Dr. Eddie um, and his, his, by his website, I think, www. Uh, Dr. Eddie, what is it, Coach Raquel? Uh, is it, yeah. I'll put it in the chat, dredieacademy.com. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. So, so please, you you can benefit from that. And again, we'll be planning, we'll planning, we'll be planning additional um, content with Dr. Eddie. So please stay, stay uh, affixed to to the Facebook page and follow Coach Raquel. We see Camille requesting it. And we see Maxine Gray Richard um, requesting it as well. So we're going to take that and we will we will do more. Again, Dr. Eddie, thank you so much. And again, to everyone who has joined on, thank you so much. Uh, so much for, for being a part of us. Coach Thank Raquel. you, Rohan. Thank you, my brother and friend. And once again, I just want to also express my appreciation to Dr. Eddie Connor for coming on and, of course, giving us some solid, solid, solid word. I was just here worshiping. I was really blessed. Mm. And, and, you know, I, I feel like he doesn't do this unless it's a Sunday. So I, I appreciate, you know, the, the, the word, you know, we're really preaching tonight and I'm blessed. I, I'm taking away the, the, the meaning of win that you have, you have came up with. It says worship, intercede, now meet a need. And, and I think that is something that we can all do. Worship, intercede, impact, innovate, get ideas, all of these things and meet a need. Now, for, for all of us that are here tonight, we talk about winning and I say that we can win in all our seasons. I want you to understand and to take this on that we are not just taking on the words and feeling motivated and then go home or turn off the computer and then we just go back to the ordinary. We're going to soar, we're going to spread our wings. And part of my thing of winning is to also help you to win. Dr. Eddie Connor has invested in my life, you know, just, just through following him and being a part of things that he's a part of. And I have grown through that and other persons have invested in my life. And I have decided that I want to win. I want to worship. I want to, to intercede and I want to now meet a need. I want to meet a need and help you. We have, we have what is called winning step coaching package. And that is something that I want to offer to you because I want you to make that winning step. So if you're not a part of the Facebook group, please reach out to me. We are going to, to just, we have about 81 persons in there. And in that group, we want to start laying the foundation to ensure that you can win. So even from tonight, when Dr. Eddie Connor shared, we, we talk about building a winning routine. It's clear we have to be in the word. We have to change our mentality. We have to ensure that we're rooted and grounded in, 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 in God and not just thinking and acting like we're victims. He said, are we warriors or we are warriors? So we have to be victorious and we are victorious because we lean not on our own understanding, but we lean on God. And so I want to thank you all for joining us tonight. I look forward to interacting with you in the Facebook group. And I will speak to Dr. Eddie Connor and we'll try to arrange something for you. You know, even though you're acting all shy, you have the opportunity to speak to him and we're not, you know, asking as much questions, but we understand, we understand. So Dr. Eddie Connor, thank you very much. Much appreciated. Persons are saying thanks for uh, having us and thanks for being here. I bless you, I bless you, and I bless you some more. Thank you so much. Listen, you all have to realize what a jewel you have uh, in the Ambersley family <laughs> with, with Brother Rowan, and, but also, of course, with the, the jewel of this generation, uh, Esther of this time, uh, the one and only Raquel Ambersley. Uh, listen, as, as best as you possibly can, continue to sow into her ministry, continue to uh, let people know about the books, all the lessons and the blessings that she continues to give. Uh, she has really been plucked out and picked and chosen uh, for such a time as this. And so, uh, listen, we are so grateful for how God has gifted her uh, through the writing, but also be able to disseminate the word to you. And so uh, thank you again for the space and place. 
of the opportunity to just uh, uh, help to amplify your voice locally as well as globally. And we know that the sky is not the limit for you. It's just a view. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for those kind words. So we're going to pray. And as usual, we play some music and close it out and just worship. So let us just pray. Father, I want to thank you. I want to honor you. I want to magnify your holy name. We want to thank you, God, that tonight you have spoken to us. Yes, you have Lord, reminded Lord. us that we're able to win in all our seasons. You have reminded yes. us that this is our winning season because right. we're not navigating it through our right. own. We're not navigating it by ourselves. We are depending on you. And right. when you are in the midst of it, God, it means that we can walk out upon the water even in the midst of a storm, even in the midst of a turmoil, even in the midst of yes, testing, Father. oh God Almighty, we shall overcome, we shall succeed, mm -hmm. we shall reap, oh God Almighty, we in shall grow in this season because God Almighty, we, we are trusting Amen. you, we are depending depending on you. We are not acting as victims, God. We have the victory through you. We are not worrying, oh God. We are warriors trusting you through it all. So God, I just want to ask you tonight to just bless each and every person that came on. I pray, yes. God, that we will not yes. just be hearers of the word, but doers also. I pray, God, that you will trouble our spirit and our heart, almighty God, that we will take up our rightful position and win. God, Almighty, we will reposition ourselves to what you are doing in this season, in yes, our life, Father. in this moment, in the name of Jesus Christ. God, we, we declare that we will worship you. We declare, God, that we will intercede. Oh, God, we declare, Almighty God, that we will be, we will have impact. We declare, oh, God, that we will now seek to meet some needs in the name of Jesus. We will listen to your still sweet voice. We will hear you, oh, God Almighty, and we will walk out and step out by faith. God, I honor you and I praise you and I thank you, oh God, for Dr. Eddie Khan. I thank you, God, for using him in such a manner. And I pray that, God, you will continue to bless him and enlarge his territory as he navigates his own season, almighty God, and win through it all. Bless him, God. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Yes, as I thank yes, you, Lord. God, for, for, for the connection. And I thank you, God, for the great way that you have been using him. Yes, I Father. pray that, God Almighty, in his low moments that God, you will lift him up and remind him, oh God Almighty, of your word. He is somebody who is focused, but sometimes God, even when we're focused, we get low. And so God, I pray that you will be with him. You will stay with him. You will abide with him. And God Almighty, he will know that you are with him through it all. God bless us as we go and we give you honor and we give you praise and we tell you thanks. In Jesus, In Jesus' name. name. Jesus name. Hallelujah. Bless Amen. the Lord. Hallelujah. So thank you all again for joining us. We will be here next week at the same time when we'll do it again, talking about transitioning, meaning how do we identify when a, when a season has ended? That's what we'll be looking at next week. So thank you all. If there are no questions, thank you for joining us. We'll play some music. I love this song so much. I got to take it from the top and you can just worship until you're ready to go. Faith, now in the middle of a storm, put some up here. It's the big thing that God has used all these years to minister to my soul. And as I'm asking, why God? Why me? Why our family? After everything that I've done, after serving you, after, after giving up all of this stuff, why would you allow me to experience this? God, you need to change this. He didn't say he would change it, but he told me so clearly. I sustain. And I began to pin these words while I was broken. My wife was depressed. But we were trying to figure out what it was like. In faith, I wrote you sustain. 
you sustain in the middle of it all. You remain the same through the rain. Still you rain. You sustain. And as I stood here with a little bit of hope, trying to figure out how I was going to minister to anybody else with this deep question in my heart, these words rose up at me and I said, your promises always come true. Not depending on me, relying on you. Mercies are new every day. So I will trust you. Two years later, facing some of the same challenges, I stand here full of faith, knowing that I am anchored to the one who is going to hold me through every storm. I don't care what happened. I don't know what you feel right now, but what I'm promising you is if you anchor to Jesus, he will sustain. I dare you. Some just like me and not understanding and faithful. I dare you. Some persons just join. I'm sorry we're closing, but you can you can worship. You can just worship. Thank you, Jenna, for joining. Hey. Thank you for joining, but we're we're closing. So I'm you can so just sorry. worship. This is like my third Zoom meeting for the night. I'm so sorry for being late. No, that's fine. That's okay. 